Okay, good afternoon everybody. Good to see a number of friends earlier on our online uh, EDBF stroke CYDB presentation on basically hip and shoulder flexibility, the precursor exercise. What I said to people earlier is if you owned a Lamborghini, I'm sure you all do have a Lamborghini or a Porsche or something like that, Maserati, in the garage at home. If you left your high performance car in the garage at home and didn't use it, and didn't service it, didn't look after it, never looked at it, kept it under wraps for a number of years, don't be surprised if when you come to use it, it's not gonna perform up to spec, may not even work at all. And that's the analogy we use when we're talking about the shoulders and the hips, but the body in general. So these exercises, these FAME exercises, it's my particular system, F-A-M-E, flexibility, agility, mobility, energy, it's not about really heavy weights, it's about mobility and flexibility in preparation for the demands you're gonna put on it, either in other gym work or in dragon boating or any other sport or daily life for that matter. So let's walk you through the various exercises. I call them daily exercises, I do them daily. You could break it down into sections, you could do it as Tabata, you could do it as any sort of style. If you have any questions about any of it, come back to me, ask me, but this will be posted on YouTube, it's a free resource, it's free to subscribe, it's free to you, it's my gift to you via Raging Mouflons and via the CYDBF, um, via EBF, EDBF as well, and it's a gift and enjoy, please, and let's take it on from there. Okay, here we go. First one we talked about was jumping jacks or star jumps. Now, legs. Legs are either normal star jump legs, or if you have difficulty with height or mobility, you can do marching knees. The top half have five variations. The first variation is in the frontal plane, normal star jump variation, okay? And remember, it finishes up here, not down here or down here. Option two is frontal plane and sagittal plane. So you see, we're warming up the body aerobically, and we're also warming up the hips and the shoulders in its full range of movement, planes of movement. So basically, there we go, one forward, one back. That's option two. Option three is two forwards, two top. Forwards and top, there we go. Simple as that. Legs doing the same. Option four, palms down to palm up, a horizontal lateral extension, okay? Palms down, palm up. And option five is like jump rope, but notice I'm interlocking the hands. So my left hand in front, left hands behind. There we go. You could, if you wanted, add some spotty dogs as well as an added extra for number six. Okay then, so let's take it through, let's call it six. So I'll do five of each, so one, two, three, four, five, and 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 one, interlock, two, three, four, five, and one, two, three, four, five. What I tend to do is sets of 10, and I go through for about 90 seconds. That gives me a good pulse raiser, Raise the heart rate, raise the pulse, gets me thinking, gets the joints working. Okay, so then moving on. So you can, it's designed to use a paddle, but I'm gonna use this white piece of pipe, because it's easier to see, and also I've got a light here, and I don't want to, sooner or later, I'm gonna take the light out. So let me take you through it. Posterior chain. The posterior chain, I'm sure you know, is the muscles of locomotion down your back, ranging from your calves in the bottom, through your hamstrings, through your glutes, into your lats, trapezius, rhomboids, etc., etc. Those big muscles of locomotion as we go through moving, not just from day to day, walking, running, all the rest of it. So the posterior chain stretch, there's four, there four points to it. Up at the top, all the way to the top, notice my knees are unlocked, they're not locked out. So soft knees, all the way up, all the way down, and my, spength, my spine will lengthen out as I do it, to the left and to the right. Now notice, when I rotate externally and laterally, this hand is stationary, and I'm rotating around that point, stretching through the obliques. This one, same again. So I'm not coming up here. That will work, but this is a better stretch 
this way. So the four parts in the posterior chain stretch, and oblique stretch, up, down, rotate, rotate, and up, down, rotate, rotate. Big stretch, remember to keep the knees unlocked, soft bend in the knees. Okay, body rotations, very simple. Up over the shoulders, you can do this with resistance band as well, and we're looking for a good rotation. It's gonna be range of movement rather than speed. If you can get range of movement, then you can increase the speed, but one comes before the other. Okay, there we go. What I'm trying to do, I'm standing sideways now, is get through 180 degrees if I can achieve that. Okay, there we go. Body rotation, fairly straightforward. The next one is the overhead arc. I also call these take that's. So there I am at a take that concert. Frontal plane exercise, side bend exercise. But instead of just going to there, what I'm aiming to do is try and get this hand down around about my knee or behind my knee. And what you'll find, same as a posterior chain, as you do it, you'll find your, your, your back loosens up, your obliques lengthen out a little bit and you get a little bit further down, okay? So that's what we're looking for. Once again, range of movement rather than speed. And just let gravity do its work. There we go. So take that or overhead arc. Next one is a squat. You're familiar with squat. Once again, we're gonna sit back. We're not gonna lean forwards. And the idea is that my knees don't go any further forward than my toes and I drive the ground away as I stand up. But not just a straightforward squat. Overhead, just to lengthen out the core. I don't want you leaning back here. So that when, you, when you squat down, let the arms naturally come forward. Try and keep the spine neutral. And when I say spine neutral, I don't mean upright, I mean neutral. So it can be at an angle and still be in line. Okay, so there we go. Overhead squats. And from the front, it can either be parallel or sumo squats. Both work, as long as we get in as far down as we can keeping the head up and spine neutral. Okay, overhead squats. Next one is gonna be the up and over and sagittal stretch, or a bow. So an up and over is quite simply, as the name suggests, up and over, mobilizing the shoulders. <clears throat> and the sagittal stretch is up and over and take a bow, feet in the hamstrings. Up and over, take a bow. You see what I mean? So that's two part movement again. There we go, and one more. Really mobilizing the shoulders. Okay, there we go, moving on. Halos or helicopters. So we're rotating around our head. So describing an arc or circle around our head. You can really feel this in your obliques again and mobilizing your shoulder at the same time. So I tend to do this 30 seconds in one direction or in the other. If you do any of these exercises Tabata style, there's an on interval and a shorter off interval, yeah? Depending what you do. And the way to progress is to increase the time interval or intensity, or you could work with a weight bar as opposed to a paddle. It's geared up for paddles, but you could do a heavier weight as well. Okay then, so there you are, helicopters or halos. Next one is gonna be the kayak stroke, which is, Imagine I'm in a kayak, and if you think about the dragon boat stroke, I've still got the setup where I've got my lower hand in front of my top hand. And here it's a hip and shoulder and serratus anterior, this muscle that reaches across the big swing muscle we use when you punch, okay? So what we're doing here is we're doing a push, push, push. Swinging the hips, locating it. It's aggressive, but it's precise. almost anaerobic as an exercise. And there we go. Last little one before we change over. So we're gonna do the dragon boat hip flexor. Now, it doesn't matter which leg you normally paddle forward in the dragon boat. That's not really what we're testing here. We're looking for a nice stable position. Either leg works 
But the point of the exercise is to flex the hips. If we were doing a clean and press, you're probably familiar with it, as you do a clean and press, as a bar comes up, you do a triple point extension. You extend the hips, the knees, and the ankles. So that hip extension is what we're looking for. If we were to get forward, we need to open the hips, and that's your rotation and your reach, however you particularly teach a stroke at your location. So what we're looking for is up and over, up and back. So we're not going up and over and then paddling through. It's a hip flexor shoulder exercise, okay? This hand shouldn't go any rearward than the hip in the first instance. So once again, head up, back straight, look at where we're going, that's fairly standard to most clubs. Up and over, flex the hips and back. Up and over and back. Just working those hips, opening up the hips, and then up and back. Building up that neural pathway as opposed to muscle memory, which is essentially the same thing. You can extend this same exercise into the posterior phase, or a posterior phase. We don't paddle like this, but if you wanted an extra stretch, you could go up and over and back, and then stretch up just to get that extra stretch, working the shoulders and the obliques as well. I know we don't paddle like that, but we're just building flexibility and mobility swinging through. It's a bit like if you did um, the paddle trail exercise some clubs do. It's that sort of thing. We don't normally paddle like that, we're just extending that range of motion and full range of movement. Okay? That's another variation to that. Okay, next exercise is going to be the abs and abductor stretch. So what we're looking for here is kneeling position, one leg, second leg, out to the side, my hips are square, my knee is facing you, and this leg here is also facing you. And once again, similar to the, uh, the side bend, the take that exercise, we're simply going from one extreme to the other, and here we've got more of a stretch in the legs as well. So side bend exercise again, once again, using gravity, using your weight to accentuate and develop the stretch, okay? So that is the abs and adductor and oblique stretch. Both sides, obviously, we line up again on the other side, set up exactly the same and replicate the same stretch. So we get different stretches in the legs of the, well, the opposite leg in this case. Okay then, moving on. Something a little bit more shoulder specific. Now in the old days, we used to do what we called the doorknobs exercise. That sort of seems to be coming back in again where we're rotating that arm horizontally, full range of movement, okay? And then we do both forward, both back, and then we do opposition. So we can accentuate that with our dragon boat paddle. So what we're doing, holding the paddle in one hand, I notice this hand is my, behind my back, and we're rotating, using the paddle as a bit of a lever, a little bit more weight, it's only half a kilo, but that's enough just to help you accentuate that stretch. And with this hand, I'm holding up my back as far as I can get it comfortably. So we're looking at mild discomfort rather than pain. If I don't use that hand, I've got a stretch through my shoulder. If I stretch up my back there, I've got more of a stretch that comes all the way through. So we're getting two stretches out of one. That's basically what we're doing. Okay, nice and slow, developing that stretch. Doorknob and back scratch, I'm calling this. For a minute or a period and then simply same again. I can get my left arm up more than my right. So you may have a different range of movement. Movement, I keep confusing movement and mobility. And I'll say movement or something. You see what I mean? Nice and slow, nice and steady. A deliberate swing rather than too fast. There we go. Doorknob and back scratch. Brilliant, moving on. So we're going on to a lateral stick stretch. Now, holding my paddle or my stick or my piece of plumber's pipe, notice wrists, neutral and knuckles facing upwards. Let go with the right hand, go into the left, let it rotate around, and I end up with my thumb facing down, and if I bend my elbow, I've got the stick parallel to my forearm, which is vertical, okay? Apply a bit of rearward, apply a bit of pressure, and I'm rotating the arm out laterally, okay? And rotating the shoulder in that plane. 
soon go off balance that way. So a nice light pressure. What I suggest is maybe 15, 20 seconds on, then release. 15, 20 seconds on, not a bounce, okay? Just developing that stretch, developing that range of movement. Okay, same again. You can do this with a resistance band as well. Going to the right this time, knuckles up, let it rotate down, don't hit the light like I keep doing. That's why I'm using the pipe inside. And that's vertical but parallel to my forearm. There we go. And I'm just once again externally rotating that shoulder. Brilliant, there we go. So that's the lateral stick stretch. Next one, once again, just exploring these ranges of movement that we don't normally, it's like, like I say, the, the functions on your Lamborghini that you don't normally use. If you don't use them at all, like the sunroof, don't be surprised if you press the button two years down the line and it malfunctions. So it's looking at our full range of movement again. And what we're doing is prying our arm away from the back. It's like the back scratch, but a little bit more developed. Okay, Let's take it easy. Okay, so we're developing that range of movement, developing the stretch over time. Okay, once again, 15, 20 seconds on maybe, and then release and on again. And it's that sort of situation. Okay, light pressure, let gravity do the work, let the leverage do the work rather, and then once we've done that, swap it over, other side, same again. It could be hand up or hand down. I tend to hook my, my, knee, my knee, my knee, my knee, Thumb over it on my knee. There we go, and we're leaving away from the body again. There we go. Nice light pressure for a period. Off, and then on, and then off again. There we go. Brilliant, right, okay. Moving on, we're going to lunges. Now lunges, I tend to do a three-way lunge. So let's leave the, uh, the paddle for a minute, the three-way lunge. I'm gonna lunge using my left leg. So my right leg is stationary. So let's just my check that you can see that. So stationary right leg, I'm gonna lunge forwards. I'm gonna lunge back and I'll use my arms forward for, to counterbalance. And then I'm gonna lunge to the side. Do you see what I mean? So I'm pivoting around the right leg in this case. All I'm gonna do with the paddle is introduce a twist. So I'm going to lunge forward, twist left, twist right, come back to neutral, lunge backwards, Twist right, twist left, both ways, back to neutral, and then lunge to the side, okay? If you want to move out to the side, you can actually lunge out to the side as well. So from the front, if you made it a full three-way stretch, you may not be able to see my legs. Lunge forwards, left, right, back to neutral. Lunge back, whoop, I've got a kettlebell there. Lunge left, or twist, twist right, and then lunge out to the side, and then open up the obliques, okay? A little bit, I'll do that again on the other side so I've got a bit more room. This now I'm gonna leave my left leg stationary. I'm gonna lunge forwards with the right, twist, twist, neutral. I'm gonna lunge back with the right, twist, twist, neutral. And I'm gonna lunge to the right and I'm gonna do that oblique stretch again. Okay, you get the idea. Slightly limited in, with range of movement here in terms of furniture, but out in the open you can see I've got a full range to operate and twist and lunge as far as I can. Okay then, now I'm going to switch to the ground movement, so I'm going to change the camera angle. So give me one second and I'll come back to you. Okay ladies and gents, just to finish off this final section of the, uh, the paddle routine, it's actually called the flying fish paddle routine, the ground exercises. Three or four of these. So we'll start off, you're familiar with the glute bridge. Quite simple glute bridge, feet flat on the ground, up onto the shoulder blades, hips up, and I'm trying to describe a, a straight line between my knees and my shoulders, obviously there's a bend at the neck. Okay, glute bridge, keep that up, feel that nice positive tension in the quads, push the glutes together, and there we go. Pleasant tension in the back, or the small of the back. Okay, that combined with a, a leg raise, up and over the head if we can get there. If that doesn't work, you can stay at a leg raise position there. So the idea is 15, 20 seconds into glute bridge. I've got my paddle or my pole down here. And then 15, 20 seconds up and over. And what I'm aiming to do with my paddle is if I can manage it, just push my legs further down to develop the stretch through the hip flexors and extend 
everything through my spine, okay? And then 15, 20 seconds of that, come down, touch down, under control, back into glute bridge. So once again, got a two part move, two bangs for your buck, out of one stretch. Hips to the sky, 15, 20 seconds, the period you wish. Touch down, up and over, okay? Increase flexibility. If you can only manage glute bridge into leg raise, just locate your hands under your posterior and then raise up. Obviously that's more of an abs exercise as well. Okay, glute bridge into leg raise. The next one is the cross bow sit up. Those of you who are O1 paddlers or maybe kayak paddlers will be familiar with this cross bow. So basically we're going sit up, so full length sit, so sit up to there and then right hand reach into left hand, left hand reach into right hand. And if you can get um, to 90 degrees, fine. If your legs flex, that's fine, no problem at all. In fact, it's probably desirable to be honest with you. Remember we're going right to left, left to right, okay? So the whole routine is one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. You get the idea. Once more, sit up, three, four. Once again, flow flexibility and mobility exercise. The last one is the cat stretch. And there's a number of parts to the cat stretch, some of which you may be familiar with, some of which I've renamed. So the theme is hip and shoulder flexibility. So you're familiar with this, happy cat. Yep. Then we go into dancing cat. And what I want you to do is mobilise your shoulders in all its planes of movement, ranges of movement. Okay, so this is the dancing cat. Just dance on your shoulders, push, pull, abduct, adduct, elevate, protract, externally rotate if you can, that sort of stuff. That's your dancing cat. Sag cat, you're familiar with that, draw in your tummy upwards. Chin on chest, arch your back, get a stretch all the way through, once again, through your posterior chain into your lower back. Point the toes if you need to, just to get a bit more of a stretch. I can feel that all the way through down my, and my lats into my upper arms and also in the triceps as well. Okay, sad cat. Then we go three-legged cat. Take your hands like an abductor oblique stretch. Sorry, lat and oblique stretch. We're scooping through and up, and then three-legged cat again, through and up, okay? And hold that once again for a period, 15, 20 seconds, whatever, and the last one is the sleeping cat. Your cat may not sleep like this, but ours, does, ours do. It's a prayer position, the child's pose, sit back on the heels, creep or slide the hands forwards, and try and press down on your shoulders, so you're pivoting around this point and rotating down. If you can get your elbows or knees down, knees, these uh, shoulders down towards the ground, that's great. Big stretch, walk the hands forward a bit further, get more of a stretch. If you feel a bit of cramp in your legs or your feet, just ease off, dial it back, and then come on again, just once more through. It's a happy cat, so hands are under the shoulders. Nice neutral position, head up, big smile. Into dancing cat, just flexing those shoulders, mobilizing those shoulders. Just increasing that flexibility, building up that joint strength, promoting blood flow, very rich supply in the shoulders. Then we're going to go into sag cat, drawing this tummy, chin on chest, arch the back, feel the stretch through my legs. And then three-legged cat, lat and oblique stretch, hand off the ground, palm up, thumb forwards, relocate under my shoulder. Okay, three-legged cat stretch again. And then finally, sitting back, sleeping cat. Extend out, sit on the heels, reach or slide and press down, rotate around the hands. Your hands are the fulcrum, pushing the shoulder blades down. There we go, beautiful. That's to finish off. And then on the day I actually did an abs challenge as well. So that's it, that is the Flying fish shoulder routine. That's our gift at Raging Mouflons in Cyprus to the EDBF friends across Europe and beyond. I hope you enjoyed that. Once again, it's a free resource that will be uploaded, downloaded, side-loaded. I'm not sure what the term is. 
onto my YouTube channel. It's a free subscription channel. It's free access videos and always will be uh, for you to use, view at your leisure, use at your leisure, and it's our gift to you. So have a good day, stay safe, and in the words of that old song, I keep forgetting the song, it is, be young, be foolish, and be happy. Have a good day, and thank you.